So thank you very much, Pierre, uh, for the invitation, for the presentation of our work on population genomics of flat oyster, particularly in the identification of genetic markers in candidate genes for the main threatening of uh, the flat oyster populations, the Bonemi Austriae. I am very happy that you have organized uh, this meeting because it's an opportunity for us and for everybody, for our community working on flat oyster to enter in contact and prepare new, new proposals. So uh, uh, most of the results I am presenting come from the Oyster Recovery Project that as I have told, it uh, was established for uh, analyzing the population structure of flat oyster and to address the main constraint for flat oyster production that is bonamiosis. The project was led by industrial partners in the right part of the slide but a the research lab a participated research institutions participated in this project. The project, the project began in 2010, but finished in 2014. And uh, but uh, the analysis results uh, in the opening of new uh, avenues for collaboration are currently coming to, to up to date. So my presentation, I will uh, divide my presentation into main uh, parts. The first part is the uh, presentation of flood or of uh, oyster recovery results, uh, mostly focusing on uh, population genetics of flat oyster in the Atlantic area, uh, and also um, the different strategies for identifying candidate genes and markers for resistance to Bonami Australia and to understand the response of the uh, flat oyster to Bonami. Uh, starting from these uh, uh, results, we have opened new collaborations with mostly with uh, uh, Rolling Institute that they have provided a very interesting and useful uh, holding on sequencing for, uh, for gathering all the previous information regarding the genetic markers and the candidate genes. And also with Wageningen, with Pauline Kammermann's group that we are where we are validating our genetic markers in a new, new populations. Also, we have very good connectivity with uh, Jacob, as uh, he has shown, and many other countries along Europe in Flat Oyster, and we are open uh, absolutely to new collaborations. So I will present the results very briefly, uh, especially the, the, the first part of the Oyster Recovery uh, Project because uh, by that time we, there were not genomic resources in, in flat oyster, I am telling about 2010. So our first uh, approach was to perform uh, runs, uh, genomic and whole transcript, uh, transcriptomic, mosaic transcriptomic runs for uh, developing genetic markers and to develop a new, a new oligomicroarray for evaluating gene expression analysis. In each slide, I present the, 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 uh, a picture, a capture of the, of, the, of the publication, and also a brief re result for your interest regarding the objective, the results and conclusion, but I not uh, stop on that. So uh, the main uh, output of this uh, first analysis was an OISTE database. In this OISTE database, what is uh, meaningful today? Uh, we have in this database 6,000, sorry, 7,000 genes related with the MOSI transcriptome and uh, associated with this gene, we have close to 1,000 microsatellites and thousands of, of SNPs associated to these genes. And this database is publicly available, so you can uh, get, you can ask, you can request for access to this database, just only providing the IP or, or your computer for entering in the, in the database. From this database, our first work was to analyze the repetitive elements in the flat oyster genome, both, both at the whole genome level and at the transcriptome level of the hemocytes. And we uh, so analyzed transposable elements, but especially focused on microsatellite markers because we were interested in enlarging the uh, microsatellites available, available by that time for the analysis of population genetics in the Atlantic area of flat oyster. So we try to um, develop 40 new microsatellites and validated only 14 of them. 
uh, probably uh, the high variability in polymorphism in the plateau of the genome is, is, the, is the guilty of this low uh, success in validation. But anyway, we took, uh, we could uh, use 14 new microsatellites to add to the previous 11 one for the analysis of the populations uh, of flat oyster in the Atlantic area. So the, the objective of, of this work was uh, 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 to analyze the, the genetic structure of oyster beds in the Atlantic area, thinking on a, a, a baseline for um, a, a sustainable management of these populations. So we select uh, uh, samples trying to address three main uh, layers of the uh, structuring of genetic diversity. So we took samples from all the Atlantic area, uh, from uh, different countries involved in the, the oyster recovery project, but also try to focus on a small area to look uh, at the microgeographic level if it was significant genetic structuring or not, and also a temporal criteria. So we analyzed consecutive cohorts of uh, the different years in flat oyster. So in total, we analyzed more than 600 uh, individuals from 22 oyster beds, 30 oysters per sampling point using 14 microsatellites. And the results of the structural analysis suggested both the main, the main significant uh, structuring was K equal two and K equal three. So the Spanish populations appear most separated from the northern populations at the, at the, at the uh, French, Brittany, Russian front. But additionally, in the northern populations, really two additional groups could be detected uh, related with, uh, with uh, uh, British Isles in north of France. And on the other side, the Denmark and the Netherlands population, so those associated with the North Sea. This structuring in three groups was, uh, was corroborated by a neighbor joining tree where the three clusters can be clearly seen. Uh, that represent the same clusters shown in the structural analysis. Here you can see the three uh, main clusters we could identify in, in our analysis in the, in the Atlantic area. But uh, in addition, I have to say that we couldn't detect significant uh, genetic structuring at the microgeographic level. So all Galician North Spanish populations could be considered as a single palmitic population because not significant structuring was detected. Regarding the temporal variation, we could significant temporal variation using a mobile analysis. You can see here the significance of the temporal variation between the replicates, but this temporal variation represented a very low amount of the total variation, less than one fourth of variation of the geographic uh, variation detected. So then we move on to try to uh, understand the, the response of uh, flat oyster to Bonami Australia following, following two different uh, approaches, following a functional genomic approach and also a, a population genomic approach. So I, I would like to emphasize that the Bonamia is, a, is an internal parasite that uh, parasite the mosaics that are the, the immune cells of the flat oyster immune system and they, they provo provoke an inflammatory response leading to death, especially when uh, reaching the commercial size, so it's particularly uh, dam damage for the, for the producers. So uh, in this study, first I will talk about the, the functional genomics approach. So we performed a, 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 a challenge with, uh, uh, with Bonami Australia, uh, the Bonamia uh, the parasite came from a heavily infected Bonamia oyster population, and we uh, performed a cohabitation challenge in individual baskets with the same concentration in all baskets uh, of Bonamia oestriae parasites. Uh, we used two different strains in, in our study. So a, a naive strain really coming from, from Denmark, as, as can as I remember, and other long-term affected uh, populations uh, from the north of Spain, from Galicia. We, uh, after the challenge that uh, last one day, uh, we, took some, we took samples of the mosaics three, uh, three times, one day after challenge, 30 days after challenge, and 90 days after challenge. Five oyster replicates were 
taken for an experimental condition. In this work, this experiment was done by the group of Antonio Villalba at the CIMA facilities in, in Spain. So the first and the most interesting result that they, that was that the long-term affected uh, flat oyster sample or strain responded very quickly, much quickly than the naive strain. You can see here the at time one the upregulated genes more than 300 in the case the long-term uh, affected sample, while in the naive only 36, and then regulated the same picture. Uh, interestingly. In time two, a 30 days post challenge, we couldn't detect any, uh, any gene differential expressed, either up or down regulated, either in the naive and in the long term affected strain. So we hypothesized that could be a, a, a period of parasite latency because at the third, uh, at the third, third time, the 90, 90 days post, start, post challenge the response reactivated and was mostly reactivated in the naive, uh, in the naive strain that saw some delay in the response to bonamia strain while the uh, uh, long-term affected responded very quickly. Likely selection for uh, a long uh, time uh, across generations is the responsible of this quick response of the long-term affected oysters. So we, uh, uh, we identified in this heat map, we are showing the, the main genes that can uh, distinguish or can separate clearly uh, the naive and long-term affected uh, uh, oysters samples into two main clusters, as you can see here. And uh, uh, some genes are upregulated in red in the affected uh, oysters, while downregulated in green in the naive oysters. While other genes uh, have the opposite pattern, downregulated in the uh, long term affected and upregulated in naive oysters. I have highlighted two, two, uh, two sets of genes, those related with the stones. Stones, as you know, are, have a very important uh, role with the packaging of DNA, but also in the mollusk have been suggested that they play a, an important role as um, antimicrobial peptides. And they also the several collagen genes are involved in the response, the quick response of the affected strain to the, to the parasite. And this could be related with the extracellular matrix with the uh, impediment of the entrance of the parasite to the inner uh, part of the hemocytes. Uh, also, we could uh, analyze groups of genes we look for correlated uh, gene expression profiles across the three times within each strain. We could uh, identify highly correlated uh, patterns. For example, in this group, 151 genes in the, in the uh, long-term affected strains were upregulated uh, in time one, one day, one day post challenge, but no regulation in time two and three. And these genes that uh, have a very quick response are related, are enriched in, in two main functions re regarding the general transform of the hemocytes, the endopeptidase inhibitor activity, and the extracellular matrix, matrix structural constituent that uh, come uh, again to the uh, idea that the extracellular matrix can play an important role in the response to the uh, resistance to the parasite. So we finally in this, we suggest three main, uh, 24 main candidate genes regarding it, the right, the quick response to the parasite, the difference between the both strains in the uh, relationship with the immune system. And you have here to the right, the main term, both terms associated with these genes. So these genes deserve future attention for new, in, new coming studies. The second approach that we performed for trying to identify genetic markers for uh, resistance to Bonamia ostriae was a population genomics uh, analysis. And for this, we took advantage of a recent, uh, by that time, published uh, uh, chip chip by the Roslin group that I have to say that worked very well. The gen genotype we obtained with this chip was very consistent. So I, I recommend very much this, this, uh, that this, micro, this chip, uh, this uh, SNP chip. So our objective in this analysis was to select two, uh, 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 two types of uh, uh, oyster beds. Uh, those 
three that were long-term affected by the parasite, uh, Rosmore, Kiberon, and Ortigueira, and three uh, naive populations, Trally Bay, Loch Ryan, and Linfeo. The idea was to try uh, to select uh, different uh, um, uh, flat oysters uh, subjected to different uh, selective pressures regarding uh, Bonami Australia with the aim of identifying genomic regions that could show divergent selection of the resistance to Bonamia. So uh, first of all, I have to say that with the 15,000 SNPs of the, of the chip, we detect the same regional, the three regional groups as in the, in the previous study with microsatellites, so nothing new in the landscape. And we, we, we used two different approaches to try to identify outliers of divergent selection. One related with the scan program, it's a more conservative program, and the other related with the Arlequin program, is less conservative. And three different scenarios were used to, to try to identify the outliers. And regarding this, uh, we identified 21 genes, 21 genetic markers, sorry, that were common to all the uh, strategies and the scenarios used. And I have to say that in addition to the chip uh, provided by the uh, Roslin group, we validated, we, the, we validated uh, 37 SNPs associated to the candidate genes previously detected in the, in the functional analysis. And one of those candidate genes was also detected with the different studies, so was added to the 21, detected for 22 more consistent SNPs, uh, following a more uh, stringent uh, criteria, criterion, and 87 with a more relaxed criterion. I am in time, uh, Pierre, Pierre, or? Yes, you have two minutes left. Okay, so uh, the most interesting point is that the, the 22 uh, uh, SNPs uh, or genetic markers we identified showed uh, strong signal, signals of linkage equilibrium. Here you can see the you can see the probability of uh, uh, of the departure from the null hypothesis of no linkage equilibrium. So most of the 22 linkage uh, the, the, the genetic markers detected apparently are located in a single genomic region, suggesting a major, a major QTL regarding the resistance to renaming. We use the 22 most consistent markers uh, to try to show how these markers could separate both the long-term affected and naive population, and their separation was quite good, both in the structure analysis and the APC. So apparently these markers uh, are uh, good candidates for identifying a uh, selection for resistance uh, to Bonami Australiae. And with the 87 markers using the more relaxed criterion, we could separate better the two uh, main groups uh, of our analysis. Finally, we uh, took all the uh, outliers identified in our study, irrespective of they were related to Bonami resistance or not, to try to, to develop a, a practical tool to, uh, uh, for a management of uh, flat oyster populations in such a way that we used uh, uh, SNPs that were from the most informative regarding the FST to the less informative, we were adding SNPs and try to see if they were uh, able to currently to correctly classify uh, the individuals to the populations of origin. And really with 60, 70 SNPs, all the individuals or more than 90% of the individuals could be associated or assigned to the population of origin. I have to say that the Denmark population, the Danish population was assigned to, the, to their origin with only 10 SNPs, most individuals. So suggesting the, the high differentiation as Jacob told before. So finally, the, we are preliminary results from two uh, collaborations currently with Roslin. Roslin has provided us a preliminary draft genome of Latoste that was a, a main uh, problem for us. So we have mapped 
the genetic outli the outliers in the genetic uh, 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 the, uh, the genes uh, related with resistance to monemia. And we can see that uh, they, most of the outliers go to a specific context. Some of them make big uh, set of outliers co coming to a single context. For example, this context include both outliers detected in the population genomics, but also genes related with the functional analysis. So this, uh, the, 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 the uh, having a, a, more, a more refined genome will be very, very important to try to go ahead with this, with this analysis. And finally, working with the Wagenini group, with the polling cameras, we have to validate the uh, genetic markers detected in our analysis that was published in evolutionary applications with new populations coming from the five populations uh, from the Netherlands. And we use the um, 16 outliers that could be genotyped in those samples. Uh, and using a structure, we identified K equal to, so two uh, genetic units. Uh, in principle, that could be associated with individuals resistant to venomous trii regarding our previous study, individuals uh, sensitive to venomous trii. Uh, the origin of these uh, two, uh, two groups uh, or two genetic units could be associated with the uh, with, uh, long term affected population in the night population uh, using a priori information, so given to the structure two reference populations, the, the naive one and the long affected one, and the individuals with the orange color clearly were, were the same, but were associated with the resistance, and the green were, uh, were the blue that were associated with the, uh, with the naive sample. So apparently, at population level, we could identify a higher percentage, percentage of individuals with these markers, 25%, than in the naive population that were analyzed only 3% of, uh, of the individuals with these markers. And nowadays we are uh, performing a new uh, study with uh, Pauline, trying to uh, check the validation of our markers at the individual level. So they are analyzing with qPCR the charge of the parasite at individual oysters in a population uh, with bonemia present. And we will use uh, the individual genetic, genetic analysis and try to associate this analysis at the individual level. So uh, that's all. Sorry if I pass with my time and that's all. Thank you.